Hey, 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 you lovely listeners. You're back here with me, Donald Wonder, on Planet Tyro to do another book discussion. It's been a while, and you would think that after all these months of me not uploading anything, I've consumed so many other books or anime or stuff to talk about. Believe it or not, this book series we're going to talk about today is the only thing I've been reading for nearly two years, well, a year and a half. I think the last thing I spoke about was The Wheel of Time, but this series here, well, what happened was, I don't remember, I was dealing with, I was looking around for books to check out after The Wheel of Time, and I came across, um, there's a guy who reveals The Wheel of Time that I spoke about in another video, who recommended this series, The Live Ship Traders Trilogy, which is a series of just three books that is part of a much bigger world, which I found out later. So the first thing I want to do is speak about this book series called The Live Ship Traders Trilogy, which is basically a book series about this shipping family or shipping. There's a lot of shipping families that are called traders. They have these ships that they use to do business, commerce, go from island to island, and they get wrapped up in a lot of magical, political, and a lot of drama, a lot of family drama. The series is based, it's like a... Uh, it feel, it's, a, it's a fantasy series, but also based in a lot of other stuff going on. I just want to say for the record, I thoroughly, thoroughly, really loved this book. This trilogy, the Life Should Traders trilogy, I thoroughly loved it. I thought the characters were fantastic. Again, this is essentially a book series about traders going from island to island and they get caught up in a much, much bigger story. Now, the first, the first book, of the Life Ship Traders trilogy, um, which I believe is called Ship of Magic, correct me if I'm wrong, but also I'll put the books on the screen so you guys can see it. It was kind of dull for me. The first half of the first book, I heard so much praise about it on Goodreads and Amazon and everything, and I thought, I didn't even know what the hell was going on. There were, seems to be these sea serpents going on as well as these families. And the main character of the Life Ship Traders was this, this girl who just seemed to be kind of buck wild. She was growing up on the ship with her father. She wanted to take over the ship, but she's a woman and, you know, people didn't want her to inherit the ship because they thought she was spoiled, blah, 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 blah. There's so much family drama with this book series that I didn't really know what was going on. And as the books went on, I found the characters to be super engaging. I found the world to be quite, in, quite engrossing. And it just starts off being about this family and these, this ship, these live ships. Live ships are basically ships that have a soul, that have a personality, that can have all these memories. And there's this whole, there's a lot of deep interwoven story in here. And I'm going to wrap around to the bigger story because this trilogy is part of a massive 16 book. This, this book series is even longer than The Wheel of Time. And these first three books were just phenomenal. I loved the drama between this young girl trying to win back her, what she claims is her rightful heir to uh, have the family ship to trade to do whatever she wants. And there's another ship that has, these live ships are, are really spiritual characters that have all this knowledge. And I'm trying to be vague because I don't want to spoil it for anyone. But I just want to say um, the writer of this book series, Robin Hobb, is such a well, just a well-versed writer. I've never even heard of her before. And this book series was such a phenomenal introduction to a bigger series. So I just want to say, and, and the reason why I'm being vague here is because I have to jump around a little bit. The Life Should Trade This Trilogy, I'm going to give, I'm going to give my rating right now, a first class. The drama the interaction, the characters that come along, pirates come along later in the story, especially one pirate. And the story is very intense, very emotional. Of course, I listened to the audiobook of the, of the series and I found it just so engaging, so engrossing. But what I want to say is after I've read this trilogy, I realized this trilogy is actually part of a bigger series called The Realm of the Elderlings. And this is actually the second trilogy of like, what, 14 other books. And what happened is I went back because this trilogy, it's a second trilogy. There was a trilogy before it called the Assassins, 
let's just call it the first book was called the assassin's apprentice and there's this whole other thing whole other trilogy before this and after this and basically what you got in the realm of the elderlings which is what this whole series is based in is like a two-pronged story that all merges into one the first trilogy that i missed that i'd read after the fact the assassin's apprentice links into this one so beautifully but i will i do want to say that i think even though this is like book four five and six of this whole 16 book trilogy starting here starting with the live shit trader trilogy was actually great the fact that i had to go back and read like this book about the assassin and you know at first i felt like do i really have to read this but I have to say, now that I've read, and now I've read all 16 books of Robin's Hood, the Far, well, the Far Seer trilogy, the Fritz and the Fool, all of these books are absolutely phenomenal. As an entire story, when you put all of these together, these, this is probably one of the most engaging book series I've read. And the live ship traders, this family of ship traders, their story is interwoven with the first story about this royal bastard this assassin now the uh, first trilogy called the assassin's apprentice the assassin the farcier line whatever you want to call it i wasn't a big fan of this again the first book of each of these trilogies didn't really sell me but if you give it a chance i think the payoff is great and when everything is said and done if you Re if you read the Life Should Trade trilogy, then go back to the Assassin's Apprentice. Now, the, before I even say anything, I know some people would just be like, read it in chronological order. Go back and read the Assassin's first. And then this. honestly, I have no problems with, with anyone starting with this second trilogy first. You, I don't think you can go any further. The Realm of the Elderlings series, which is what all these 16 books are, are, are truly well-written books fantasy action drama books love betrayal politics honestly this is kind of a mishmash i'm going all over the place with you i've been a, i think i've actually been a little bit more concise and less vague in my other reviews i don't want to ruin this for anyone the audiobooks of audible are phenomenal i love all of these 16 books compared to other books i've read like um jackie faber and some other books, even, you know, The Wheel of Time, this fits right in up there as one of my favourite series. And I just, the way the characters are written, Robin Hood, and the way they interact, and the drama, the drama between the characters are so well done. But the action's phenomenal. The actual storyline of what is actually going on with the realms of the Elmlings, it builds up really, really, really well. And I just have to say, um, I, I, I want to thank... The recommendation i'll put the guy's face on the screen because i can't remember who it was that recommended it to me but i'll figure it out and put it in post but robin hood has created a phenomenal book series here which you know i enjoy just as much as the weed of time if not more i'll be honest with you because the scale was a bit smaller it's not as varied as the wheel of time in i think the story in a way but it is very very concentrated in the lore of this world which i absolutely love the writing is great. I mean, the female, she's Robin Hobb is a female writer who writes male characters phenomenally, which is a really great surprise. And, you know, any, I think any gender, any good writer could write any gender. It's just the attention to detail and the, the depth of the character and just have some meaning. There's so many thoughtful um, elements of these books that I've read. But I do want to end and say this. I'm so glad I started with the Live Ship Traders trilogy because I'll be honest with you, it's kind of like eating the main course before eating a starter, if I'll be honest with you. And, you know, the books after the Life Trilogy that go back to Fritz and the Assassin, I just want to say it all comes together phenomenally well. So I don't think I've done the best job of even describing how much I've enjoyed this book series, but for over a year since the winter time, I've been listening to this book and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. Again, I'm a big proponent for audio books. Get it on Audible, check it out on Audible, and you'll be in for a lovely surprise. But I'm going to go against the grain and say the Live Ship Traders book series, which is the second book series in the whole thing, I have no regrets about the fact that I've read this book series first, even though it's the second trilogy in this whole universe. 
didn't matter. If you've read this series, let me know in the comments down below. Honestly, one of my favorites is really heartfelt, really emotional, really good action. The world building is good, not amazing, but good enough. When all is said and done, and I look back on the story in retrospect, I think it was really well executed, you know? And that's why, even though I gave the Lion Shit Traders trilogy a first class, I believe, I'm gonna give the whole series, The Realm of the Elderlings, all 16 books as a collective story. I'm gonna give it a low first class as well. I'm gonna give it a low first class because I feel like the beginning of the first two trilogies, the Assassin's books and the Lion Shit Traders, takes a little, you know, it's a bit slow. It's a bit slow, I'm not gonna lie. But honestly, halfway through this, the Lion Shit Traders trilogy, on halfway through the first Assassin's books, the Assassin's Apprentice books, it really drew me in. I was captivated by the characters. They were very well realized. And guess what? The ending to the whole series is really good. A little bit bittersweet, I will say, but I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. And if you came through listening to me at this point and you've um, been a bit perplexed on why I've been so vague, I'm just trying not to spoil it for you guys. Check out the 16 book trilogy, 16 book saga called The Realm of the Elderlings. But if 16 books sounds too hard for you, start with the Live Street Traders trilogy, go back to the Assassin's Apprentice series and complete the whole thing. Highly recommended. Well done, Robin Hobb. And yeah, I'm going to sign off there, guys. Sorry the reviews aren't coming out as fast and as consistently as they used to. But the channel's not dead. I'm still here, still checking shit out. And I'll report on the things I love that I love to talk about with you. So if you read the series, leave a comment in the comment section down below. I don't think this series has hyped up enough, in my opinion. But then again, it's not as bombastic and not as super action packed as others it's just really mature really thought-provoking great characters great world building i phrase it enough guys thanks for watching thanks for listening and i'll see you on the next recording